to the showcase. So Sangamesh, I'll let you take it away when you're ready to go with the showcase of the latest release. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, are you able to see my screen? Okay, uh, well, today I'll be starting with the, um, let me move the images here. Okay, uh, let me start with these uh, features uh, demo today. That would be on loan rescheduling, floating rate, variable installments, then loan rescheduling, uh, sorry, uh, then loan provision. I'm on the MeForce login page. Let me log into MeForce X. And uh, oh, we have written document available at these links. You could access it here. So I open loan rescheduling process here. Let me go to uh, a client and you know, create a loan, then reschedule that. So let me click on new loan, then select the loan product. Let me backdate create this one, just to make the transactions. And click on submit. <clears throat> Then approve, then disperse the loan. Now the loan is in active status. Um, so let me make a repayment. Okay, make a repayment as on 1st of February. And this will show the uh, repayment schedule here. So I made a, a repayment on for the first installment here and go to the more then we have a, a reschedule drop down here you need to click on reschedule button then reschedule from installment has on so let me select this has on uh, has first of march to zone 15 then you need to uh, define the reason in um, code, code and code values for re reason for rescheduling. So I have defined it here. So let me select the others as the reason. So reschedule to find. Let me change this date to, uh, sorry, this could be submitted on it. I am submitting on uh, 1st of March. Then I could provide the comments, rescheduling. This is an uh, optional field. And these are the um, parameters you could you know, check and do the necessary uh, rescheduling here. So let me uh, reschedule to 15th of March. 2015 then these are the option fields if you need then you could you know check the checkbox uh, for this example it's midterm grace period so you could you know provide the uh, principal grace period interest grace period here. and in the same way you could you know um, extend the repayment period number of repayments uh, number of new repayments can be provided here then adjust interest rate for remainder of loan. You could provide the newly uh, new interest rate here. Then uh, by checking the checkbox, recalculate interest based on new terms will uh, happen. So let me uncheck that and click on submit. So once uh, you click on submit button, uh, approve or reject page opens. So you need to click on approve if you want to approve. 
then change this to uh, March first. Uh, so you could see, you know, early repayment was uh, first every month, and it has rescheduled to fifteenth every month. So this is about um, rescheduling loan here. Uh, let me move to the next part, that is floating rate. Let me mute user. Okay, thanks. Um, now we'll move with the floating rate. Let me go to the products, then floating rates. I have defined three different types of uh, a floating rate chart here. Uh, we'll start with the base lending rate. I have defined, you know, uh, once is, is base lending rate is checkbox, that means this is a base lending rate. And I have defined here, uh, I have started with um, second November, 2015 has 7%, December has 8%, January has 9% and February has 10%. Then you need to activate this one in order to use the floating rate. In the same way, uh, I have defined differential interest rate here. Okay, um, note for an organization, you could define base lending rate only once and uh, that will be considered as a base lending rate, the earlier defined rate here. So whatever the differential, uh, is differential you are enabling, so this will be on top of the base lending rate uh, chart. So I'm defining with the two 2% uh, for every month here. So that will be uh, base lending rate is 7. 7 plus 2% would be considered for the calculation. So I have created one more uh, chart that is absolute wherein I un uncheck the is base lending rate and also uncheck the is differential. And I have activated this one. So what are the uh, percentage amount defined here will be considered um, as it is. So once this is defined, uh, let me quickly show you how to create a floating rate as well. So you need to provide here floating rate. Okay. Then if you want to uh, make this as a ease uh, base lending rate, you could check the checkbox. So let me leave that as it is and define the uh, in, uh, define the date and the interest rate. So remember, your definition should always be um, from the next day of the current day. So today is 14th, let me make this as on 15th and define the chart here. Uh, let me give this as 10 percent then if I want to make this as a ease differential then let me check the checkbox so and <clears throat> define for the next chart let me uh, provide from 1st of February we'll provide this as 11 percent and click on submit so this uh, this floating rate chart gets created and once this is defined here go back to your products then uh, go to the loan products then um, create loan product <coughs> provide all the necessary uh, fields for creating loan product here let me quickly provide um, Floating rate product, something like that. If 
FRD. Then change or provide required values. Then provide the loan amount. Then the number of free payments. So this is where you know you could enable the floating interest rate. You need to check the checkbox here. And this will show. So you need to select the uh, floating interest rate chart. So re uh, recently we, we had created floating rate one here. So you could all also select that. And this differential rate could be the add on the provided rate over there. In either to use floating calculation, so you need to check the checkbox uh, for ease floating calculation alone. Otherwise, it will consider has a flat interest rate, whatever the provided uh, for the first month or the disbursement time um, date interest rate, it gets considered. You could set the min default and the maximum interest rate allowed here. Repaid every then you need to check the checkbox for calculate interest for exact days in partially paid in order to use the floating interest rate. And also a floating rate the interest rate should be a declining interest method type. Then you need to uh, check the checkbox for recalculate interest and define the recalculate interest uh, rate here. So let me quickly uh, define recalculate interest rate. And then scroll to the bottom. Then you could click on submit. If you want to enable accounting, you should have defined chart of accounts and then those chart of accounts would have come here and you could map the accounts respectively. So let me click on submit button here. And now we have created a floating rate product here. So once this is done, go back to your um, uh, client, then you could select new loan. Then let me select a product, early defined product, that is a floating rate with base lending. Let me discuss this uh, as on 15th. Okay, let me, I could make this one. Okay. And here I need to provide the interest rate differential uh, amount here, value here. So this could be zero as well, but let me provide it as one for now. And you need to check the checkbox for uh, is uh, interest is floating interest rate calculation allowed? So this is a checkbox. You need to check check it here. Then click on submit. So if, if you click on uh, floating interest rates here, uh, you could see the uh, defined rate. That is um, base lending, then the base lending rate plus the loan level uh, interest rate plus the uh, loan account level interest rate. So that is that will be eleven percent. So you could click on approve and disperse the loan. This is about the floating interest rates here. Uh, now let me move with the next um, feature that is variable installments. Let me uh, um, go to the product, loan product and uh, I have already created a loan product in order to make it easy.
Okay, let me select here. Okay, all the uh, required fields required for the um, defining loan product need to be defined. And you need to scroll to the uh, setting section here. Then we have is variable installments allowed. You need to check the checkbox in order to use the variable installments here. So I'm, this is the um, uh, uh, min we know gap between uh, days and this is the maximum days uh, gaps between. So you could define those gaps here. Then scroll to the bottom and you could you know uh, define uh, other required fields and you could click on submit. So once this is defined, go back to the clients and uh, click on a new loan then select the loan that is, that is variable instrument loan product let me backdate to uh, create this one <clears throat> Then click on submit. So, <clears throat> um, you the loan should be in the um, pending for approval status. So, in this page, you could you now um, edit the repayment schedule. So, let me click on edit repayment schedule here. And you could see the um, generated repayment schedule. So let me uh, change this to uh, 500 has a first installment amount and change the date as well. Let me make this uh, has on 12th of uh, February. Then um, change the next installment, um, you know, installment uh, amount as well then you could you know, uh, click on plus button in either to create the um, new installment here for example March 15th is a new installment here then you could provide the um, amount otherwise you could you know uh, click on um, remove button so the installment amount gets removed for example I uh, remove June here so once uh, that is done you could click on validate in order to see the new schedule so this gets changed all the interest values and the respective um, schedule get changed uh, once you click on the validate button and we have pattern wherein you could you know uh, define from and to date and set your own pattern for example uh, for from March 1st to uh, July 1st let me uh, change that to uh, day of um, day of month to 10th instead of first and provide the installment amount has 1000 so if I click on confirm you could see from March for, from March it has changed to 10th March then till uh, July and change the amount to 1000 respectively you could always click on reset it will uh, regenerate to the pre uh, previously generated installment schedule. So let me click on submit and you could click on uh, approve then disperse the loan respectively.
now let me move to the um, loan provisioning okay in order to start uh, creating provisioning you need to go to the admin organization then click on create provisioning criteria here so let me define a, a provisioning criteria here criteria has to and let me select the uh, available loan product then provide the min and max uh, number of days let me start with first I provide this till 15 so let me provide the percentage here and also please remember to um, create the uh, chart of account for liability account and expense account in order to use a uh, create provisioning criteria so let me select the liability provisioning and expense account has a loan loss let me provide the next sub standard um, provisioning here let me select liability provisioning and loan loss then provide the min and max percentage so you could always uh, define your own set of uh, days than the percentage here once the criteria is done you could click on submit button in order to create this criteria okay let me um, go to the created one here I have all already created one criteria here so let me use the same criteria once this criteria is done you need to go to the accounting uh, you could see the provisioning entry before that let me uh, go to the client then create a new loan with a variable install uh, sorry uh, with a loan product here let me backdate uh, create this one <clears throat> and click on submit then click on approve then submit and disperse the loan okay now we could see um, this is uh, in areas so let me go to the accounting then go to provisioning entries then you could see the um, provisioning entries done here so let me um, so these are the um, features and documents are available respectively So let me pass it back to uh, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Sangamesh. Yeah. And so the other the other features that were shipped over the past release cycle that you know we don't have a user interface to demonstrate for right now include our self service APIs, 
So many of our partners in the community have been looking to build client-facing applications and enable the client directly to interact with the data within Mifos X. So we've built out a set of APIs that allow the client to authenticate themselves and log in now, and then they have the ability to view their respective accounts and the details of their accounts to make transfers between their own accounts and then also to make transfers to accounts and other clients within the same financial institution. And so we've built that first set of self-service APIs in this release and then for the current 16.03 release we're also working on adding additional APIs to allow clients to you know, edit the details of their accounts, apply for a loan uh, directly, you know, from a self-service channel, and then to also make a repayment to their loan account from a savings account. And at the same time, so we can demonstrate how these self-service APIs can be used, we'll also be working on some reference applications that will be made available through the community, which will include a smartphone Android based reference uh, application as well as a web app to allow partners and customers to have an out of the box self service solution that can be utilized in production or extended uh, for localization in their local area. And then the other you know small feature that was just a part of this release cycle was adding the ability to switch between the OAuth 2 and HTTPS methods for authentication. And so I'm going to unmute everyone now so we can open the floor to any questions if there are any of them. And so Sangamesh you know, has on his screen the link to the user manual and then the blog post that you know we shared earlier today with the overview of some of these features also has the links to the respective sections of the user manual to utilize each of these features. And then Sangamesh and Dana have also been periodically uh, uploading training videos to our Mifos Tech YouTube account. And so I know there's a training video in place there for loan loss provisioning. And then over time, we'll also have some training videos in place for the other new features that you've seen today. So let me open the floor to, to any questions that there might be. So I'll unmute everyone. Um, and then if you have a question, please either speak up or you can type it into the chat. So. OK, so if anybody has a question, they can mention it now. And, and while while others are gathering their questions, you know, I'll just speak to a couple, you know, areas of the features that Sangamesh demonstrated. So, so with the loan rescheduling, you know, we have numerous requests from some of the partners and users in our community to be able to do this uh, to a loan more than once. Currently, with the loan rescheduling module, that can only be done. You can only reschedule a loan one time. And so this is, you know, a limitation that some of our customers need to, to get around. So we have it on our roadmap to support the multiple rescheduling. But in order to accelerate that further, we would need someone in the community to help with this development. But that's one other enhancement we know is needed on the way. And then one other you know, note I wanted to make about some of the features we've shipped. So for the variable installment loans, if you want to support the variable installments, that's only for the loan interest calculation type of daily. And so you can't have a variable installment loan if you have the same as repayment period uh, interest calculation type specified. So those were just a few of the clarifying points I wanted to share about these features. And while, while we still have some time on the meeting and before anybody else has any questions, I also wanted to, to mention that we do have our 
introductory webinar on Mifos IO, which will be the next generation architecture of Mifos that our team is working on. And so we encourage everyone to attend that webinar to learn about this new uh, third generation of Mifos, which will be taking, you know, what we have currently and then breaking it down into microservices oriented architecture and providing a more extensible framework for building digital financial service applications. And so Mifos X will ultimately sit on top of this new architecture. But we're happy to be able to introduce it to the community and especially want partners who might be interested on building it to attend and learn more. That webinar is going to be uh, this upcoming Thursday. It'll be it'll actually be an hour later than when we had a webinar today. So it'll be at 1500 GMT. And when we send out the link to the recording from today's session, we'll also send the link to register for that upcoming upcoming webinar. And then the other announcement I'd make, even though this is a user call, I just want to remind folks if you are a developer and you're interested in attending our MIFOS Tech Days Global Developer Summit, that will be occurring from March 9th to 11th in Amsterdam. And so this is a technical event geared towards developers and those building on the platform. But please visit techdays.mifos.org to learn more about the event and to register. So early bird registration is live now through the end of January. So if you want to take advantage of those rates, I encourage you to, to attend. And for those that are looking to attend a partner or an implementer or more user-based conference, we will also be holding two regional conferences this year. And the current tentative locations are, you know, somewhere in East Africa, potentially Uganda or Kenya, and then somewhere in Asia, and we're looking at India. And so the time frame for these will be the April-May time frame. So please uh, stay tuned to the mailing list and other communication channels as we send along updates with more concrete details about each of these events. And so if there are no other questions, I'll have one more small announcement, and then we'll wrap up the call. And so the other announcement I just make is that the core team is in the process of fleshing out the design and detailed functional specifications for the, the features that are going to be worked on in 16.03. So we've made a call for feedback on the mailing list to some outstanding questions that are in place there. So if you've not provided any feedback there, uh, this week is your last chance to do that, as once we get done with this week, the functional specifications for the features, which include our shares and dividends module, uh, support for amount-based interest rate charts, and then dormancy settings for savings accounts, the functional specifications for all these will be, be finalized this week. So if you want to provide input on how you support these features in your region, Please do that this week. But the uh, development is active and underway for the 16.03 release. So, if there are no questions about the functionality that Sangamesh showcased today, we'll end the meeting early. But I want to thank everybody who joined the call. We had a number of new community members. Uh, join us. And so we're looking forward to having our regular user meetups once more. And we'd love to have anyone in the community who would like to share something they're working on or give a case study or presentation about their experiences using MIFOSX to, to lead part of a session. So if you're interested in doing that, please definitely be in touch with either Dana or myself and we can help you prepare as we'd love to have you be active part of a future yeah. user meetup. So I just want to thank Sangamesh once more for showcasing the product and generating all the helpful documentation to help you utilize it. So we'll end today's uh, user meetup call and I hope everyone can attend our next webinar which will be coming up in one week's time. So thank you everybody. Have a good Evening, afternoon, or morning, wherever you may be.
Take care. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you.